Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the WWE NXT Stand and Deliver live preview show. We're doing a kickoff of our own. We're going to preview the WWE NXT Stand and Deliver, which takes place Saturday afternoon. Obviously, WrestleMania weekend, uh, very jam-packed, tons of information. This is the channel uh, that's going to keep you updated uh, along the way. A lot of big things happening, a lot of big things to discuss, and I can't wait to discuss it with you guys all tonight. Um, now my audio should be fixed. My audio's good, right? Is that true? My audio's good? Are we good now? We better? We're botching WrestleMania week. We are fucking botching WrestleMania week already. Technical issues every fucking year. <laughs> okay, listen, guys. Uh, what I was saying was WrestleMania week is absolutely jam-packed. And um, look, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm super excited for Stand and Deliver. I want to talk about it. Um, I want to give you guys a breakdown of how call-ins will work on this stream, okay? If you are a YouTube member or you drop a super chat, you take the highest priority within the call-ins, okay? As I predict every match, if you want to call in, you have to be in Discord so I can call you on Discord. There is a way to do it, okay? With that being said, if you drop a super chat or if you become a member or are currently a member on the channel, you are the highest priority call in, okay? So current existing members, it doesn't matter what tier you're on, the 199, 499, 999, it doesn't matter. You are the highest priority. So if you guys want to call in, then you have the highest priority. But you have to be uh uh you have to be part of the Discord server for me to facilitate the call. With that being said, I control the call, meaning if you're going to be a dickhead and just swear the entire time or like rage or say anything inappropriately, uh, we don't want to get demonetized by YouTube. We don't want to, you know, we don't want to take down this channel or anything like that. So I do have the right to kick you off at any point in time. Um, but I do hope that you guys can contribute to a nice, fruitful conversation. If you guys are interested, let me know. Um, I'll be paying attention to the chat. With that being said, all super chats are also guaranteed. All super chats are guaranteed uh, to be read out loud. Um, and then don't forget, we do got a contest on the channel for 100,000 subscribers uh, if you guys are interested in that. So make sure you guys click subscribe. Um, with that being said, I, I gave the rules to uh, the call-ins. I just want to know how you guys are all doing. That's what I want to know. I want to know how you guys are all doing. Are you guys excited for Stand and Deliver? I am absolutely excited for Stand and Deliver. I think it's going to be a really, really good pay-per-view. And... Um, I think it should be fun this year. A lot of big things happening. Obviously, we'll discuss it all uh, on the channel. Now, with that being said, let's just uh, let's just try to get right into it, huh? Oh, and if you haven't clicked like, don't be a dumbass. Click like. Click like. Click like. Guys, listen, the ad revenue comes in. The super chats are all great. That's all fine and dandy. But the biggest way you can support the channel is by clicking like on the stream. And then, of course, sharing it with your friends. Um, it's definitely appreciated, and um, yeah. Will I be live with Billy this weekend for WrestleMania? No, I will not be. I will be solo dolo. Um, yeah, that's going to be how it is, all right? Now, with that being said, there are tons and tons of great things happening this week on Stand and Deliver, this weekend, I should say. And I want to kick things off with the match that was announced yesterday, which was the six. Well, actually, no, I'm sorry. This is this is the match that's kicking off, uh, which is Joe Gacy and Sean Spears. So this will be on the kickoff show. Um, obviously, a lot of people are curious to see what WWE does with Sean Spears, especially today, now that he's gone from AEW and entered into WWE. Um, personally speaking, I'm a huge fan of Sean Spears. It's not really shocking that I'm a huge fan of Sean Spears. I've been a huge fan of really since the Ty Dillinger days, but I saw the, the, the chair shot, you know, the, the just swing me gimmick, the chairman, uh, when he entered AEW and I thought it was really dope. I, I love the presentation. So for me personally, um, I'm excited about this match. Now, yesterday on NXT, uh, we did a watch along, but the one thing that was really interesting to me was Joe Gacy getting hurt during his match. Now, when I say getting hurt, I say getting hurt in quotations because they called it a no contest. Um, but in reality, 
he goes up to Ava Rain in agonizing pain and says that he is going to be he is going to be competing Saturday uh, against uh against sean spears and i like this it's a nice little mini feud it's perfect for the kickoff show stand and deliver having kickoff shows matches and, and wrestlemania not having them i just think it's a little bit weird i don't understand why wwe is not doing um i don't know why wwe is not doing it uh for wrestlemania but i like the fact that it is taking place on nxt stand and deliver uh, guys my prediction is pretty damn simple here Sean Spears is going to get the win, and I think he's actually going to be pretty damn sadistic in the way that he does it to Joe Gacy. Uh, believe it or not, I don't think Joe Gacy is going to be sticking around in NXT. I really don't. I think Joe Gacy is ready for that call up. Um, I think he is like the. I think he is absolutely ready for the main roster. I do fully expect him to be part of the main roster. Um, and you know, realistically, if I, if I could be honest, I think the main roster could benefit from having Joe Gacy, um, which is what excites me. Honestly, it, it really does. I, I think that would be like a really cool thing. Um, now with that being said, let's see if I can get, I would love nothing more than for this to work. Um, for the chat. You know, it's interesting because I was able to pull up the chats yesterday. And now, for some reason, I cannot pull them up on here today. There we go. So now we should be able to see the full chat, hopefully. Uh, yes. Okay, cool. I can I can bring the chats in. Um, so if you guys are wanting to, definitely uh, interact in the chat. Drop those emotes, all that good stuff. Um but yeah, let me get back to the Sean Spears thing. I want Sean Spears to win. I want Sean Spears to win. Uh, I think it would be very good for Sean Spears to win. It would be a big win for him also, you know, just being part of WWE now in the company, like joining the company. Um, I think it would be pretty damn significant. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I think the the biggest thing is like, with WWE right now, you bring in Sean Spears from AEW, you don't want this guy to lose, right? You want to show AEW talent that if they are to cross over, you are going to be a big part of what they got going on. And um, I think that's a big portion, right? Um, I think this is an interesting point that David Decker is bringing up as well, which is that Joe Gacy should join the Wyatt Six. I don't know exactly how they go about it, um, but Joe Gacy did play Huskus the Pig, and I talked about this on more Ango, so I would actually have him do it. I just don't know how they introduce it, but I do think that would be a really cool moment or a really cool storyline. Um, I don't think Sean Spears should join the Wyatt Six. That's why I think Sean Spears should get the win. He should be very decisive with the win. He should beat the living shit out of Joe Gacy, and then I think that would actually make for some really cool stuff moving forward. Um, with that being said, I think we can move on. Because that's just part of the kickoff show. Does anybody want to talk about Sean Spears and Joe Gacy? Does anybody want to talk about Joe Gacy and Sean Spears? Because if you're interested, let me know. And I will call you on Discord and we can make this work. But. But. You guys got to remember the rules. So. Ladies and gentlemen, I am opening up the phone line. If you are interested you got to be part of our Discord server. And again, the highest priority goes to YouTube channel members or those who drop Super Chats. But if anybody wants to go, the phone lines are now open. I'm definitely interested to debate if you think I'm wrong. Whatever it may be, let me know. It's WrestleMania week. Every time I do a live stream, people say they want to call in. So now I'm opening up the lines. How interested are you in calling in? Are you prepared to have a debate. Do you disagree? Do you agree? Let me know what it is that you think. I am looking at the chat. Who is it going to be? Who wants to be the first one to call in? But you got to be in the Discord server. And the Discord server link is in the description down below. Chat, this is your time to shine. If you're not in the Discord server, I cannot call you. So let that be known. 
If you're not interested in doing call-ins, let me know now. Why is it not letting you join the Discord? Let me check the invite links. Let me see what is going on. You never know what to expect. I posted the Discord link in the chat. You should be able to join. Wrestling is art. You are a channel member. You do have the highest priority. Go ahead. Let me know if you're in the server and I will give you a call. CD, you want to chat? Is that what I'm hearing? All right, let's see. Let's get this going. All right, let's see. CD, you want in? All right, let's see. All right, let's see what's happening. Discord is completely free. Let's see what's happening here. We should be good now. I think I got all the kinks working. CD, you now have access to the call-in channel on Discord. If you click on topics and click call-in, you'll be able to join the call. Go ahead and do that. We should be good. CD, all you got to do is click the uh, call in. All right. You are currently muted. Just make sure you unmute yourself and then you are free to begin. Our first caller of the stream. CD is currently muted. But if you can hear me, I hope you can because the floor is yours. Huh. I'm not sure what is going on. I don't know if we're having technical issues on my end or CD's end. I'm getting no response from CD, unfortunately. Hmm. What is happening? What is happening? What is happening? Guys, we got to keep the show moving. We got to keep the show moving. It says you don't have permission to speak. Okay, let's see if I could fix that. Okay, thank you for telling me. See, that's why I don't know. Now you should be good, I think. Do you have permission now to speak? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now we have, now we have it fixed, I believe. CD, can you unmute yourself? Does it work now? It says, whoops, unable to accept invite. Okay, that's really strange. Or is that something for, for something else? CD, it should be able to work for you. It says that you have permissions. Can you confirm?
Okay, no big deal. CD, I'm going to send you a request. Discord seems to be glitching, but CD, I'm going to send you a friend request on uh, Discord and then just go ahead and accept a private call. And there you go. You'll be able to join in. I don't know why Discord's being so annoying. So silly. CD should be able to call. That's the craziest part about this. It shows that he's in there. Discord's fumbling the bag right now. And I feel bad. I feel like we're taking more time trying to fix this than anything, which is not fun. All right. We're having issues. We're having technical issues. So unfortunately, we're going to keep him moving. Uh, if we could get it fixed within the show, we will get it fixed. I apologize for that, guys. Technology could be very, very shitty at times. Um, so sorry about that. Let's keep it moving, though. Uh, my pick is Sean Spears. By the way, we will look back at all of our predictions after the show. So stay tuned for that. The next match that we have is the women's six women tag team match. I am a big fan of this match. I thought yesterday it was a great way to I thought yesterday was a great way to introduce this match like finally um cuz the way that they actually showcased it, you know, in terms of like the the camera production and stuff. Um but WWE has Izzy Dame, JC Jane and Kiana James against Fallon Henley, Thea Hale and Kalani. And I am actually a big fan of this matchup. I'm a big fan of what they've done with Thea Hale and JC Jane. Long-term long -term storytelling at its finest. Um, and honestly, I think this is going to be a really fun match. I think a lot of people might be looking at this match as, you know, maybe not as a big of a deal. But I think it's going to be a fun match. I think the, <laughs> the prediction is actually quite easy. I think the baby faces actually win here. I think Thea Hale, Fallon Henley, and Kalani Jordan, uh, I think they're all going to do extremely well. But I think the, the best part about this is I think Thea Hale will be the one to get a roll-up pin on JC Jane, and then the feud continues. And then I think we will then get a big, big-time singles match between Thea Hale and, of course, <laughs> I think, I think JC Jane is going to end up winning later on. Uh, why is JC Jane not on the main roster? That's something I'm very curious about. Why is Fallon, Fallon Henley not on the women's main roster? I don't know. I do find it to be very interesting. Um, but I do think the baby faces here should be getting the win. I think it's a very significant and very... I think it's a very good thing for WWE to have the baby faces win here. I like the idea of Thea Hale getting the roll-up pin... And then most importantly, honestly, I think it's going to be really good for like Kalani and Fallon Henley to be a supporting cast, right? Um, Izzy Dame is still relatively new. So, I mean, it would never be a bad thing for her to take the pin. But I think also at the same time, um, I think the big thing that people need to understand here is that WWE has to keep the baby faces at some point winning. And yesterday, what they did on NXT has made me a big believer that Thea Hale, you know, you could have Thea Hale get pinned now and then eventually win the singles match. But I think the, the big thing is that Thea Hale doesn't have to be called up anytime soon. I do think JC Jane does. Um, and I think that's the important part. I do think that's the important part. Drop your guys' predictions in the chat since uh, Discord is being really weird. I'm going to feature some of your guys' best chats on the screen um, as a substitute for the technical issues. Uh, Richard Martinez... Um, he says Thea needs to pin JC and win the rivalry. And I do. I think this is going to be where maybe she wins the first one. JC Jane wins the second match. And then Thea Hale eventually wins the rubber match with JC Jane going up to the main roster. Um, so my pick is Thea Hale, Fallon Henley, and Kilani. And that is something that I think should be really, really good um, for the women's division.
26 WWE says baby faces win and then JC and Thea brawl after the match. I could see that. I could see that happening as well. Uh, CD is able to join in Discord apparently. Let's see. CD, try joining. Click on the call in feature again and see if it works. Okay, CD is able to come in. CD, you're oh. live on the air. Can you hear me? CD, you're live on the air. Can you hear me? So I can definitely hear you. Perfect. Live okay, there is an echo coming through. Are you able to mute your uh, computer or whatever it is? Through, are you able to mute your uh, computer? Just did now. Okay, perfect. All right, thank you for uh, joining. I'm, I apologize for the uh, technical issues, but I'm glad to have you live here on the call-in show. Uh, first of all, CD, where are you calling from? I'm actually calling from Waco, Texas. Waco, Texas. All right, cool, cool, cool. I've never been to Texas. I want to go to Texas. I've never heard of Waco, Texas, though. I will tell you. Where, where is it? Uh, is it closer to, like, Dallas, Houston, San Antonio? Like, what area? Well, Waco is actually a, a college town, so this is where Baylor University is located. Ah, okay. See, I'm not a fan of Baylor. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know this has nothing to do with wrestling. I just want to let you know I'm not a fan of Baylor. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the the women's basketball team has, you know, in the past decade has been pretty, uh, pretty dominant, you know, so, you know, so that that's kind of what we're known for here. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, let me ask you a question. Uh, you know, since we were having some technical issues, I'm going to have you just join in on the conversation with the first two matches. Um, so let's rewind for a second and go back to Sean Spears and Joe Gacy because uh, I was trying to get somebody's opinion on that. My whole opinion was that Sean Spears should win, absolutely decimate Joe Gacy, and then Joe Gacy should get on to the main roster. I kind of just want to hear your opinion on that, and then uh, how do you see that match going down? Kind of going over that, I mean, I, honestly, I, I do believe that Sean Spears should actually get the win. And then Joe Gacy go up to the main roster and be a part of the Wyatt Six since they're since they're teasing it so much, especially at the end of the the uh, documentary. Um, and he, you know, reportedly, you know, possibly had 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 been uh, involved in it, you know, from the get go. I, I really believe that he would flourish on the main roster in that faction and really help to develop even more so of his of his character where he could not only just play a factor in that, but just really show his side of, of, of his character, of his natural character that, that he's been showing, you know, as of lately in NXT mm -hmm. and really pushed it that much further. Yeah. It seems, it seems like the, uh, it seems like the major, major consensus here is that I think most people believe that Sean Spears should win and then Joe Gacy should get called up and then kind of, you know, move with the Wyatt six. It is interesting because, a lot of people don't realize that Joe Gacy did play Huskus the pig, right? And yes. the one thing I love about that too is when you look at Huskus the pig, it was such a small little role, right? Obviously, it was just for the return. But the cool thing about WWE storytelling is like, well, why was Joe Gacy Huskus the pig? And they could turn that into somewhat of a story to justify why he's in the group. Um, so what I love about this, though, it, it keeps both of the guys strong. But Joe Gacy just got his ass beat yesterday, and here he is. He loves the pain. He's a psycho, and uh, it's a fun character, honestly. I think Joe Gacy's entrance and everything about him kind of reminds me of Mick Foley and a little bit of the the dark character stuff. So very, very, uh, very cool stuff happening there. And then I do want to get your opinion on the women's match as well since we're taking the call-ins. We were talking about the six women tag. Uh, just kind of give me a rundown. What do you think? How do you think it's going to go down? Who is your winner? And what do you think happens next? Baby faces are going to win. I, I kind of actually agree with your assessment that after after you're going to get Thea and, uh, and JC Jane, they're going to brawl, and it's going to become uh, it's going to further that storyline where she has to continue to uh, kind of fight adversity, fight the fact that JC Jane was the person that financed and helped to bring uh, Chase University back. And her kind of defending what what Chase University was at one point, you know, in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Do you think? Uh, do you think that Chase University, or should I, or I should really just say Andre Chase? Do you think Andre Chase is going to be involved in any part of this match tomorrow? Honestly, 
<laughs> something tells me that he's going to come to a crossroads where he's going to have to pick either Thea or kind of turn to the dark side and, and try to, you know, side with JC Jane since she helped him get back on his feet and, and refinance, you know, chase you. I, I think he ends up having to reach a crossroads where he has to pick and he acts, he actually picked JC Jane over Thea Hale. Yeah. I think, I think it's such an interesting such an interesting idea because I could very well see them going that route. But the the cool thing about um, Andre Chase as well is like it was such a silly gimmick at first. But if you are trying to change them into a heel group or a heel faction or just him specifically as a heel persona, this would be a good way to do it. I agree. Definitely. I am super excited to see what happens next. CD, I appreciate you calling in. Um, I appreciate you uh, being a member of the channel, and uh, I, I hope to hear from you soon, okay? Absolutely. I appreciate you taking my call. Thanks. No problem, brother. Take care. You too. Great assessment from YouTube member uh, on the channel, CD. Really, really love the assessment, and I really love the idea of the chase you, kind of going dark, that type of thing. There's a lot of possibilities there. Who knows what could happen, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, who really knows what can happen? Um, there is a lot of talk right now. Oh, hold on. Oh, okay. That was just a glitch. Yeah, there's there's a lot of the cool things that could come from this. And, and if you guys know the way that I, I, I watch wrestling and, you know, the way I dissect storylines, I like things where sometimes, even if it's a little bit predictable, it could just really have some really good stuff in the long term. This is one of those things. It doesn't require a, a, a title belt. It doesn't require anything crazy. It just takes a little bit like it, it, there's just a lot of cool stuff that could come from it. Um, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. All right. I want to turn into our next match, which is the WWE tag team championship match. And this right here is Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin versus Nathan Frazier in Axiom. And this is my potential match of the night. My potential match of the night. Uh, yes, I, I, I think this is potentially match of the night. And I'm very curious to hear what everybody thinks. I, I'm looking at the chat. Richard Martinez says Braun and Corbin retains. Colin J says this is obvious. Uh, what is so obvious about this? That's the question. I really don't think Braun and Corbin win. I think the underdogs are going to win. And I actually am excited about the idea of Axiom and Nathan Frazier winning because they're a hell of a tag team. They are a... You can tell when these guys are, are that good. You could tell when these guys are that good. They are such great wrestlers. I don't see them winning the tag titles and having an extremely long reign, but I do think something very significant happens here. And I think Braun is going to SmackDown. We know he's going to the main roster. I don't think there's really a point for Braun Breaker to be holding the SmackDown tag titles or the NXT tag titles. And I don't see Baron Corbin and Braun going up to SmackDown being a tag team. I just see Braun Breaker moving up. I think this is going to be an upset. I really do think we get the upset. I think Nathan Frazier and Axiom win the tag titles. I think this is going to be a really good tag team match. I think this is going to be a very good match for, for Axiom and Nathan Frazier. Like, this is their coming out moment. This is the, the moment that really makes them huge. Um, I like CD, what he's saying right here. He says, Corbin turns on Braun after a loss. And... I like this a lot. I like this idea of Corbin turning on Braun. You could do a blow-off match and then officially move on from it. Um, guys, I, I think I, I think Axiom and Nathan Frazier winning here is just huge. Um, make Corbin NXT champ end of days the most sacred finisher of all time. Yeah, I think Corbin should be in the world title scene. I really do think he should be in the world title scene. So this is a way to get them away from the tag team division. Um, I also like upsets. And this one has upset written all over it. I think I think this has upset written all over it. 
And uh, for me personally, as a fan of of upsets and unlikely finishes, this is the one that I, I think works the best. I think this works the best. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Eric says big upset. David Decker says Corbin is the one to dethrone. Well, you spelled it wrong, but it's okay. I understand you're you're speaking of Dragunov. This is cool, man. I, I think this is the one that's exciting to me the most. Um, definitely the most exciting to me. And the one that probably will be the best in, in, terms, of, uh, in terms of the night. Match of the night. Um, it looks like we got a lot of people joining the Discord. Wrestling is art. Do you want to call in? I know you were trying to get on earlier. I would love to hear from you. You are a YouTube member on the channel. And again, you take higher priority. So um, if I can get you on the call, let's do this. Let's see if we can get it to work. Let's see if I can get this to work. Let's see. Yeah, it looks like it should work. Uh, wrestling is art. If you're able to call in, it shows that you're muted. Can you unmute yourself? If not, I added you as a friend and that should be a workaround. I think that's the workaround. If not, let me know. Let's see if we can get this working. Yeah, so after I send the friend invite, that's when it worked. Okay. Yeah, it could just be privacy settings or whatever. Discord could be kind of funny. Maybe moving forward, we'll do this with Google Voice. We'll figure out a, a, a better fix for the call-ins. Remember, guys, um, Super Chats and members get the highest priority with call-ins. Wrestling is art is on, but I don't know if I have the ability to call in because he hasn't accepted the request. So let's see if we can get that working. We got to be kind of fluid, though, because we got more matches to go through. Let's see what happens here. Okay. I don't know. Wrestling is art. Are you muted or what's the issue? What, what are we? I'm not getting any communication from you. Um, so I, I can't be working on that. I guess we'll have to keep it moving. Yeah, he's muted on the call, but it shows. It shows the permissions are allowed. So. It shows Discord is allowing you to make the conversation and to do your thing, which is why I'm having an issue or not sure what the hell is going on, but I know it's not from my end. Okay. Wrestling is art. Oh, you're fixing your mic. Okay. I see. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're going to have to keep it moving. Um, not really sure. Not really sure what's going on. David or Justin, you want to call in? Feel free to do so before we move on. Right now, we're talking about Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin versus Nathan Frazier and Axiom. Just as a reminder, my pick is Nathan Frazier and Axiom. They're going to win. Biggest upset. Match of the match of the night, in my opinion. I think this is the match that everybody's going to be paying attention to. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's... You know, the fun thing about this match, too, is I think we're going to see some crazy spears and some crazy moves. And then the way that the, the, the babyfaces end up winning here 
it, it's just gonna be really really dope what's up zach pack definitely not too late appreciate you coming through uh justin justin kennington justin kennington you're on the air what's up brother can you hear me justin hey hey uh your quality is is something's up with your quality can you are you far away from the the phone yeah okay can you hear me now yeah i hear you all right yeah so we're talking uh well actually justin let the viewers know where are you calling from justin are you with me yeah, I'm with you. All right. Can you can you let the viewers know where you're calling from? I'm from, calling from my work. I work at Walmart in Georgetown, South Carolina. All right. From South Carolina. Thank you, Justin. Hey, uh, really quick. We're talking about Baron Corbin and Nathan Frazier, Axiom, Braun Breaker, two-on-two -two tag match. Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin defending the NXT tag titles. My pick, to reiterate again, was Nathan Frazier and Axiom. Uh, what, what, what's your opinion on this match? How do you think it's going to go down? I think Axiom and Nathan Frazier win because Braun, I think, because um, Baron Corbin turns on Braun. Wonderful, like, wonderful. Um, like a, mismu a miscommunication between the two of them, and then that's the reason they lose, and then they have a fight after the match. So you think the, the turn is going to happen during the match? Yeah, like some kind of like a like a miscommunication between the two mm -hmm. that leads to the finish, and then and then then Bro then Baron gets pissed because they lost, and then and then Baron beats up Braun. Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, what what do you think is gonna be the match of the night? This one is my pick. I think we get the big upset, but uh, what what match do you think takes match of the night? It's between Trick and Mello. And Lyra and Roxanne. Interesting. Me. Interesting. I can't wait to see how it all goes down. Justin, thank you for calling in. I appreciate you, brother. No problem, man. Anytime. All right. I'll see you soon. All right. Take care. Yep. That was uh, YouTube member Justin Kennington on the call. Great observation. Justin thinks the turn will take place during the match. I find that to be an interesting prediction. Uh, you never know what happens. That's the beautiful part of these. Um, that's the beautiful part uh, of these uh, predictions, right? You, you never know what's going to happen. These matches could, we could very well be wrong, but I like the idea of being right. And I think it can make a lot of sense. Let's turn our attention to the next match. We have the WWE North American NXT Championship, NXT North American Championship. We have Oba Femi versus Josh Briggs versus Dijak. Triple threat match. Oba Femi versus Josh Briggs versus Dijak. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for Dijak to win. Dijak, in my opinion, is going to pin Josh Briggs. Uh, but this is not the end of the road for Oba Femi. Now, I think a lot of people are going to ultimately pick Oba Femi because they don't want his title reign to end. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I think Oba Femi needs to be on the main roster. He needs to be called up right off the rip. And, um, yeah, Dijak has to win a belt at some point. So when is he going to win a belt? You know, I would rather see Dijak take the world title off of Dragunov. But they haven't done that. They haven't done that at all. So I don't know what the hell the actual plan is. But I do like Dijak a lot. And I think Briggs, you know, they have some cool video packages and they're trying to rebrand him. For all we know, WWE could swerve us all and have Josh Briggs pin Dijak. Uh, this is one of the things I don't like about making predictions. I think all three could actually be a very reasonable choice to win. You don't want Oba Femi to lose the belt, but if you don't have him get pinned, I guess it's logical, right? Um, this is one of those matches where I think it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be a really fun match. I think a lot of people are going to be impressed with Josh Briggs. I think a lot of people kind of forget how good Josh Briggs could be. Um, but Dijak got to win, bro. Dijak's got to win. He's been in NXT with this new gimmick, and I don't really feel like he's benefited a lot. He's having some great matches and great storylines, and his character is awesome. 
but I just feel like they haven't really given him the ball to run with. Um, and maybe Dijak moves up to the main roster. Maybe they know this. Maybe they don't really have plans for Dijak to be a champion in NXT because they see him being more uh, more successful on the main roster. But I am very curious to see what happens here. And uh, listen, if Obafemi wins, I, I wouldn't even think that's a bad idea either. You know, but I don't think he does. I think I think they're going to, I think they're going to do something different. Now I'm taking a look at the chat. And it looks like David Decker says Dijak is for the win. Zach Pack says, I can't wait for Obafemi and Dijak to move to the main roster. I agree with that. Jacob Andrew says Oba versus Ilya for the strap. Uh, let's see. <coughs> Going through the chat. Let's see. Humble85 says, I want Oba to hold on to the belt. Jacob Andrews is saying Oba is a goat in the making a lot of people uh, seem to be very high on Obafemi. I am as well, so I'm definitely not shocked if he if he retains. Uh, it looks like Robin Plays Games is in the chat. Shout out to Robin, longtime viewer, longtime member. Uh, Justin Kennington extending his membership as well. Very, very cool. Uh, I think at this point it's, what, 19 months? Yeah, 19 months. Justin Kennington, thank you. You are the best, Justin. Appreciate you. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's really relatively simple. I think this is going to be a fun match. I, I think they can go either way. I think anybody in this match could really win, um, and I don't think there's really a wrong choice. But I do think Obafemi winning is probably the most logical choice. You know, but I think my pick is uh, Dijak. I think Dijak pins. Uh, I, I think they they have Dijak pin Briggs. And then uh, when Dijak is ready to go back up to the main roster, they'll have him drop it back to Obafemi. That's kind of the way I see it. But you never know. You never know. Um, if Briggs does, if Briggs is going to be in this match and he takes the pin, he's got to take the pin from either or, right? Like that's it. He shouldn't. Like I, I like let me let me let me say this the right way. Femi Obafemi should not be pinning Dijak, and Dijak shouldn't be pinning Obafemi. And they should run that back after the fact. You know what I mean? Singles match for the title, that type of thing. Josh Briggs is definitely taking the pin. Uh, let's turn our attention. We're going to go. We had a couple technical issues throughout the stream, and I don't want to keep going too, too late um, with this. So let's keep it moving. Lyra Valkyria and Roxanne Perez for the women's championship. I know a lot of people are excited about this. And uh, I know a lot of people think that maybe Roxanne is going to win this match. If you are one of those people... I actually agree with you. I do think Roxanne wins this championship. I think uh, Lyra Valkyria is killing it. I think WWE does want to make a change here. I think Roxy is going to pull it off. And realistically, I think Roxanne winning, it's going to be by a heel tactic. So Lyra Valkyria is the one who gets cheated out of this match. I really do think so. Um, but I want to be pretty damn clear on this. Roxanne Perez winning. It's cool. And I'm okay with that. But we talked about all these women yesterday and today. Fallon Henley, Kiana James, Izzy Dame, right? You got Gigi Dolan, JC Jane, Thea Hale. There is a lot of women on NXT television. Roxanne cannot have a very, very long title reign. Now, Big MGM says something interesting. I'm telling you right now, I don't think Roxanne wins. I think Lyra is not dropping the belt to anyone but Tatum or Kiana. And that could make a lot of sense. It could make a lot of sense as well. This is not a bad observation at all. At all. So I, I am excited about this. I, I think this is going to be fun. I also want to kind of point out too, there's so many women in this division that maybe the mid-card title should happen in NXT. Now, I think this is also a really, really, really good um, observation. Richard Martinez says Tatum will cost Lyra. And I could see that being the case. I think that's a really good way of booking it, too. I also think... Uh, where was it at? Anthony, uh, where were you at, Anthony? Anthony Melendez says, I see Lola Vice going for the title next. But Lola Vice, to me, strikes me more as somebody who would be a babyface when she wins the title. That's just my opinion. 
Does Lyra go to the main roster? No, not yet. But eventually, yes, and she will be great on the main roster. Nonetheless, we'll keep it moving. My pick, pretty cl pretty simple and clear. Roxanne Perez wins. I'm excited about it. Ilya Dragunov versus Tony D'Angelo. This is the hardest prediction I have to make because I know WWE wants to push Tony D'Angelo, and I know they want to call up Ilya Dragunov. And I just, I just want to be very clear. I have no problem in the world with Tony D'Angelo winning. I really don't. I don't have a problem with it at all. If you want to do it, I think you can and you should. But the reality is I think Ilya Dragunov wins it. And that's why this match is not main eventing. I think that's why this match is not main eventing. I'm just being honest. I think Dragunov is going to win. I think Dragunov is going to stick around in NXT for a little bit. And if there is a person that should take the belt away from Ilya Dragunov, like I said, I have nothing against Tony D'Angelo. I think it would be cool. But I would have no issue with Dijak being the one to dethrone him as well. And I think that's a big part of it. Let's see. Uh, wrestling is art. I'm trying to give you a call. You said you fixed your mic. Wrestling is art. You're live on the air. Can you hear me? Are you able to hear me? I'm not able to hear you. Wrestling is art. You're live on the air. Uh, can you hear me? I can't hear you. Are you able to hear me? All right. Unfortunately, we're having technical issues or something is going on. I cannot hear wrestling is art. Um, so we will keep it moving for the sake of time. Sorry about that, guys. We will think of an alternative way because uh, people are having an issue with Discord today. I don't know if it's a Discord issue, but uh, we'll keep it moving. Um, with that being said, let's move on. My pick again, Ilya Dragunov. And that brings us to our main event of tonight's episode. Yep. Trick Williams versus Carmelo Hayes in the main event of Stand and Deliver. And ladies and gentlemen, my prediction is actually a little bit different than most people's my prediction is actually quite simple trick williams defeats he defeats carmelo hayes yes 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 carmelo hayes gets defeated but with trick williams winning it's not over it's not over this feud will continue on to smackdown i think both gentlemen both gentlemen will get called up to the main roster. And this feud will continue. Now, technically speaking, in order for that to really happen the better way, the better way of going about that would actually be having Mello defeat Trick Williams. Trick Williams getting defeated, and then Trick Williams showing up on SmackDown and attacking Carmelo to continue the feud. That would be the best way to go about it. But this is the main event. You're trying to send the home, trying to send the fans home happy. The way to do that is by having Trick Williams defeat Carmelo Hayes. Trick is winning. He's got to. Whoop that trick is going to be electric. And it's going to be fantastic. And I love this feud so much. They've done a really fantastic job with this feud. And it's exciting to see what can happen next. Now, Cedric is actually saying. And I think uh, I think Trick goes for the NXT title, and that's a very big possibility. But, guys, Trick Williams is ready for the main roster. Carmelo Hayes is ready for the main roster. <coughs> Do they really need to be in NXT? Do they really need to win that championship? No, nah, I think they could do this on SmackDown. I think it'd be a very fun feud, a great way to call them up. See, what Carmelo didn't realize is when he started this beef with Trick Williams— he didn't realize that he kind of woke up a new beast. 
and Trick ain't gonna just lay down for anybody, and I like that. So I do think this. I I do think this happens at some point, uh, where where they feud on the main roster. Both guys are incredibly talented, and uh, I'm super excited for this match. But my pick is Trick Williams. Trick Williams is an easy pick. People will be so happy with this. Their crowd will be electric. And I'm super geeked about it. But ladies and gentlemen, that's not all. One final prediction that we're going to be making. And the final prediction that we have for today is the surprise debuts or returns or whatever it may be. Guys, I think we're going to see two free agents in the crowd for WWE NXT Stand and Deliver. My prediction is that we see Julia. And I also predict that we're going to see Tama Tonga in some capacity for NXT. Whether it's in the crowd or whether it's with the OC, I do believe we get Tama Tonga in NXT. And I think those would be two legitimate uh, shout outs, right? Tama Tonga in the crowd. Julia in the crowd. Old school NXT vibe. Remember when they did it with Bobby Roode and all those other new signings? It was a very cool thing that WWE did back in the day, and for some reason they kind of stopped doing that. So I also predict that. I look forward to seeing how they go about this. I look forward to seeing how Stand and Deliver actually delivers. But this is a fun card. Fun card. It takes place Saturday afternoon. I'm pretty geeked about it. Pretty excited about it. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our predictions. I'll be back tomorrow for WrestleMania predictions. I will be trying to figure out the call-in stuff. Uh, people were having technical issues with Discord. Somebody messaged me saying that Discord is just having issues today. I don't know what it is. I don't. It shouldn't be on my end because I've done Discord calls several times and stuff, and I've never seen an issue, so... Who knows, but WrestleMania predictions are going to be a lot more longer because there's two nights of WrestleMania. A lot more in-depth conversation on that. Ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up Stand and Deliver predictions, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Peace.